Hi everyone, welcome to another Quiet PC video with myself, Andy Ford. In this, the first of a two-part special, we'll be taking a look at fan CPU cooling, the heat pipe technology behind it, and some of the larger CPU coolers we offer. In part two, we'll be listening to the comparative noise of each of the coolers at various speeds, and also explaining how to choose a suitable CPU cooler for your PC. There's only one place to be for a new PC. QuietPC.com Now the advantages of fan cooling over fanless cooling is of course the lower temperatures regardless of CPU load. The only downside is there can be some noise, but with the correct choice of components, that can all be kept to an absolute minimum. So before we start, a common question we are often asked is, rather than buying a new CPU cooler, can I simply just replace the noisy fan in my existing cooler? Well, that's a good question and the answer is yes, you probably could, but it might not give you the results you were hoping for. Simply adding a quieter fan sounds like a good idea, but if that replacement fan doesn't at least match the airflow of the existing fan, or if you have an old or inefficient heatsink, then that may lead to heat-related issues and highly expected CPU temperatures. As a result, the PC may automatically turn up the fan speed to compensate, resulting in, well, you guessed it, a noisy fan. So for the best results, my advice would be to always use a good CPU cooler with a matching fan, such as these, where the slower, quieter fan is designed to work perfectly with a highly efficient heatsink. As a general rule of thumb, the bigger the cooler, the better, because larger fans can move lots of air at slower, quieter speeds through the cooler's heatsink. Now, it's probably fair to say that for many years, CPU coolers were invariably noisy, and many still are today. But thanks to heat pipe technology, the cooling efficiency of modern CPU coolers has been greatly improved and that allows the use of slower, quieter fans. So these are the eight CPU coolers we'll be looking at today and as you can see, the range in size from the largest on the left through to the very smallest on the right. And we've broken these down into four size categories. So we have the extra large, the large, the medium and of course the very small ones. We'll be taking a closer look at each pair individually and discussing the merits of each. We'll be adding links at the bottom of the screen for each of the coolers as they're introduced. So you can go straight to our website and get the full details, such as the sockets they're compatible with and the accessories that are supplied with them. Now, all of the coolers in this video, except for the very smallest, use heat pipes to help make them quiet. Sometimes though, there simply isn't room in a case and we have to use a really slim cooler, like this Jelly Slim Silence I Plus on the end. So let me quickly just explain to you how heat pipes actually work. A heat pipe is actually something very simple. It's just a hollow copper tube that is filled with a tiny amount of liquid coolant. Sometimes they have a wick on the inside that allows the liquid to move, even if the cooler isn't positioned vertically. How they work is pretty simple too. As the lower end of the heat pipe is exposed to the heat from the processor, the coolant within it starts to evaporate, absorbing the heat. As the coolant turns into a vapour, it and the heat it contains are transferred up the heat pipes to the coldest part of the cooler, which has been kept cool by the fan. The coolant then condenses back into a liquid state, releasing the latent heat into the cooler's fins before trickling back down the pipes, ready for the cycle to begin again. Right, now let's take a look at our first set of coolers, and we'll begin with the largest coolers, the Notchua D15 and the Scythe Fumer, the links to which you'll find below. These really are big coolers, especially the Notchua D15, so you have to ensure that you have the room to fit them in your case. And we'll take a look at how you do that for these, and in fact all of the featured CPU coolers, later in the video. So why would you want such big dual fan coolers? Well naturally, they offer incredible cooling performance, and because of that they also allow very quiet cooling with the fans running at slower speeds. Who would use such large coolers? Well coolers like these are generally bought by gaming enthusiasts, who like to overclock their processor and squeeze as much performance out of their processor as possible. And in those circumstances, a cooler running overclocked processor will result in a more stable system. Of course, being very large coolers, their use is limited by case size, so you do need a reasonably large case for them, and generally speaking, that will be a case that's around 210mm or wider. Of the two coolers, the Notchua is the more expensive cooler, but Notchua really are the king of CPU coolers in terms of quality and performance. One of the reasons why they are so good is the way the fins are mounted on the heat pipes. Unlike most coolers where fins are just slotted over the pipes, Notchua's are actually soldered onto them to ensure the most efficient heat transfer possible to the cooler's fins. 
the Cyfuma, while not quite in the same performance league as the D15, is still an excellent CPU cooler with a considerably low price. As well as being quieter on the lowest speeds, the dual fan configuration ensures that both coolers offer a lot of airflow and cooling power on full speed, should cooling be more preferable over low noise operation. These coolers are also ideal for use on very hot running processes, so up to around 140 watts or greater. Now let's take a look at our second set of coolers, this time in the large category, and we have the ever popular Notcho U12S and also the Saif Kotetsu. These coolers are typically the largest coolers that most of us are looking for excellent performance without a big price tag would purchase. And they offer excellent cooling of processes and better value of the extra large coolers we looked at earlier. With a single large fan and well designed fan stack, the overall noise is kept to a minimum while cooling performance is maximised. Who would use coolers like these? Typically, this again would be gamers, but also other uses would be for music production, where quietness is often essential, or video editing and rendering, where there is heavy CPU load, particularly while rendering the final video. Of course, you can use these for any purpose where quietness is important, but where CPU load is often high for prolonged periods of time. These coolers are ideal for use on hot running processes, so up to around 130 watts. That's it for part one. Join me in part two where we'll be taking a look at some of the smaller CPU coolers on offer, comparing the fan noises from all of the coolers and we'll show you how to choose a new one.